active duty in the service of Nigeria. Now, this foundation was set up to perpetuate the leadership qualities and ideals the late General Tahiro embodied both as a military service leader and in his personal life as a man of integrity, generosity, kindness of heart is expressed in the ways he had helped fellow Nigerians. All right, so the priority focus of the General Tahiro General Ibrahim Atahiro Foundation is the mental health and psychosocial support as MHPSS to the military, paramilitary, veterans, their wives, widows, and dependents who are affected by war and violence. So um, when we talk about military, we also talk about paramilitary. Talk about military, I'm talking about Army, Air Force, and Navy. And paramilitary personnel, we're talking about civil defense, fire service, federal road safety corps, uh, customs, immigration, NDLEA, and the correctional service. And dependents, we're talking about um, their wives, uh, associations, of course. I'm sure that some of us are familiar with um, some associations uh, uh, for the wives of military personnel, uh, which I'm talking about the POA, NAOA, and NAFOA, and as well as veterans also of the Nigerian Legion. All right, and the secondary beneficiaries, which are you listening to me right now, the public, because I'm sure that even if you don't have one or two persons in the military or paramilitary, uh, you might know one or two persons also dealing with some of this mental health that we'll be discussing in the course of the program. So once again, you are welcome to uh, Cassie's campaign against suffering in silence. Now, for you to get more information on Cassie's and, of course, General Ibrahim Atahiro Foundation, the number to call is 091 279 Seven nine five zero one seven seven. That's the number to call in to get more information. And of course, for their website, you can go to www.atahirofoundation.org. www.atahirofoundation one word dot org. And for those on social media, you can go to Instagram and Facebook at Atahiro underscore foundation. Atahiro underscore foundation on Instagram and Facebook. All right. On YouTube is one word, Atahiro foundation. On Twitter is at GIA underscore foundation. All right. So these are different means for you to reach the General Ibrahim Atahiro foundation. All right. So if in case you... um. You need support or you need someone to talk to, you can definitely get to them through um, these numbers and, of course, the um, social media handles and your website. All right. So, as usual, on today's program, Cassie's, I have Dr. Isa Hamza with me. Good morning, Dr. Isa. Happy New Year. Good morning. <laughs> All right. It seems as if the cold is doing you Seriously. one kind, one kind. <laughs> <laughs> it's not easy. <laughs> Yeah. All right, so you're welcome. Thank you for joining us today, Dr. Isa. Uh, how good to have you in the new year. All right, so today with Dr. Isa, we'll be talking about combat or operational stress. Combat or operational stress. I'm sure that once I mentioned that, actually, uh, you know, comes a lot of things comes to mind. Talking about combat, talking about stress, and of course, operational stress. Now, operational stress. Um, I don't want to look at it as, you know, for those only in military, because a lot of us are doing a lot of things. You know, a lot of us are doing so many operations, even if we're not in the military. <laughs> that might actually bring stress to you. Yeah. So this is actually looking at it holistically and from different angles. All right. So this is what we'll be talking on today on the program, Cassis, Campaign Against Suffering and Silence, brought to you by the General Ibrahim Atahiro Foundation. Now, in the course of the program, if you want to call in or you want to be a part of the program, please do well to dial 706 All right, do all to dial 706 Remember, I said we're talking about come back to operational stress. So um, if you have any of this or you think somebody's dealing with any of this, you can call in, let us know. And of course, uh, you know, ask your questions too in the course of um, the, um, the program. So we have a call. Do we pick it first? Maybe oh, yes, that yes, could yes, actually yes. start up our conversation this yes, morning. Please. Okay. Hello. Good morning. Uh oh. All right. So I think uh, we'll just go ahead with our program. So, um, Dr. Isa, let's start up. If we talk about combat or so operational stress, what exactly do we mean? Yeah. Uh, good morning, and thank you for having me again. Uh, if you're talking about combat stress or operational stress, you know, you're talking about the persistent psychological uh, activities that uh, the 
our servicemen tend to encounter, you know, that mm. has a negative uh, effect to their own uh, health or mental health, so to speak. And uh, those are the activities that they, they indulge in, like uh, the operations they go to, you know, there are one or two activities that they will have to do yeah. that at the end of the day it's, it's going to become, uh, I mean, it's, it's going to affect their own uh, mental health, so like, like for instance, some of the, the, the negative aspect of, of the combat uh, mm. stress is that it can also lead to things like uh, anxiety, yeah. you know, depression, you know, and uh, it, uh, the loss of sleep, obviously, mm -hmm. and uh, avoidance of, of a lot of uh, conversation. And to some extent, it can also uh, reduce uh, a person's, uh, let's say, willpower or the desire mm. to, to, to participate in the next operation due to uh, the, the stressful event. Yeah. So the stressful events, they, they come in, in, in different forms depending on the operation. Mm. So I, I want to use this opportunity, like you said earlier, I, I want to generalize yeah. the, the whole concept, you know, because just like you rightfully said. All right, just hold that thoughts. Okay. Uh, let's hear from this caller. Hello, good morning. Good morning, Ma. Good morning. What's your name? Where are you calling from? I can hardly hear. Your name is? Oyeza. Oyeza. All right. From Dunho, no, you said. Downquarters. All right. Downquarters. All right. You're welcome, Oyeza. So let's hear you. Um, We're talking about compact and operational stress. Um, What's your take on this? Please or. Now. Did you get that question? Okay, just quickly come again and please be audible so we hear you clearly. If someone are depressed, like someone are depressed and you need to talk to people to free her heart, how can she do so? Okay. So um we'll definitely get back to you. Just keep listening, Oiza. So um Dr. Hamza, this is you know, going outside our school but it's still yes, yes, part of it. So we will uh we will definitely attend to, to her own question. Okay. But, um, so so the, the, the point is, like I was saying earlier, mm. the, the point here is the activities those, uh, those people tend to, or in a general or holistic point of view, yeah. that we tend to indulge ourselves in. You know, there are some, some activities in our workplace, or maybe, uh, let's see, in in within our own environment, hmm. that they do, we we tend to go into, and they have a way of getting back at us hmm. negatively. So so let's see one of those one of those activity is uh, uh, re relating the the military and and. Uh, the civilians, civilians is, yeah. is the civilian and the military hmm. operation or the operation that the, the military has to conduct to assist the civilians, like in terms of uh, like an example, the election, hmm. you know, they will have to gather people, you know, how to deal with them, you know, they have to be a lot more diplomatic and hmm. people with their, from different uh family background, you know, different way of thinking yeah. and, and morality as well. So they have to cope with things like that. Yeah. So and, and that and going further or in depth into the 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 operational stress yeah. uh, in, in the military is like uh, the the task, like the rescue missions yeah. they have to go to, you know, like uh, of recent, I have to give them uh, very, very good credit mm -hmm. for what they've been doing, securing the road between oh, Abuja so and Kaduna. News, yeah. You understand? So things like that can also lead to, to that combat stress because mm. after capturing the first uh, uh, location, they'll be asked to move further and go move further mm. and go. And sometimes they, they might be deprived of their own natural uh, instinct of sleep, or you understand, yeah. and, and things like that. So that's uh, 
pass uh, this thing about for, um, about the combat and operational yes. stress. Okay, so um, we want a short break. When we come back, we'll look at it squarely. How this, um, how the military and paramilitary experience the stress that we're talking about today, and um, what they should do, you know, uh, when experiencing such stress. So stay with us. We'll be back shortly. Are you paranoid or dealing with self-destructive behaviors such as sleep disorder, anger issues, drug and alcohol abuse? These are possible symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder or other traumatic experiences. The General Ibrahim Atahiru Foundation presents Campaign Against Suffering in Silence, CASIS. CASIS provides professional mental health, psychosocial support and non-judgmental services to serving and retired military, paramilitary and their families. For more info, call 091-2795-0177. Again, 091-2795-0177. Along on to our website, www.atahirufoundation.org. On Instagram is at Atahiru underscore foundation. Twitter at GIA underscore foundation. Facebook at Atahiru underscore foundation. YouTube at Atahiru Foundation. The General Ibrahim at Tahiru Foundation, promoting mental health and social well-being. Join us every Tuesdays, 11 to 11.30 in the morning, only on Liberty Radio 921.7 FM, Voice for All Station. Alright, you welcome back to the program Cassis, Campaign Against Suffering in Silence. Uh, with me in the studio is Dr. Ham Issa Hamza, who is a, a psychological... Uh, I don't know why this word is always uh, confusing me. Alright, so but they... Um, so we use that for use that code earlier. We'll definitely look into it. Dr. Hamza will see... I will definitely bring it up in the course of our discussion because it has to do with some of the questions I have for him here. So for those who are listening and want to be part of it also, you can dial 706 336 All right, that's the number to call in. Let's get to hear from you your thoughts on combat and operational stress or any other question that you might have. Because um, in as much as we're concentrating on military and paramilitary, we're also carrying the whole public along. So, um, Dr. Hamza, now before we went on that break, I said when we come back, we're going to talk about how this actually how the military and paramilitary experience combat and operational stress and then what uh, women men and women of the service should do when experiencing such stress mm, yes. so we just match both okay. questions uh, well uh, uh, in the course of in the course of uh, the operation like in the course of their their work and things mm. like that you know they tend to encounter one or two uh, decisions that yeah. they have to they call it the split second decision mm. you understand that they have to make you know does uh, in in other words they call it a, a judgment call you know so so that and this uh, too much of this judgment call has a way sometimes the result might be positive yeah. You understand, and sometimes it might be negative. So, if in a, in an event that leads to a negative result, mm -hmm. you know, it it might leave the person to become uh, depressed mm -hmm. at times. You okay. know. And uh, sometimes, if if the the operation maybe it's sometimes going sideways. I'm talking about operation, or let me use the term work. You understand, if it is going sideways, you know, the anxiety and uh, the knowledge of going to SUSU operation mm. also triggers another panic uh, 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 emotions as well. So, so these two merge together, it's, it might also affect the person's way of, of, of uh, conducting his own operation. You know? and, and for the women, for the, so it's, it's very, very interesting when I sat down and I discussed with some of our, uh, our women, uh, female soldiers. You mm. know, it's very interesting. If you are conversing with them, you yeah. will see 
you you the level of professionalism mm. and the technical know-how mm. and you know there's there's this belief or this ideology that we tend to have that women don't usually do well under stress mm -hmm. but in this case most of the results and most of our conversations that we had I didn't realize that they actually do very well, do well. you understand mm. and uh, I can give you an example I think it was the first people that that kept this road Abuja Kaduna. Mm. It was the the female squad of the Nigerian military. Yeah, yeah you understand. Too, yeah. And I, the first time I saw them, I was so impressed. Mm. You know. So if you look at this, to a layman or even a someone yeah. who is uh, into into a uh, okay. All right, just hold that thoughts. Let's take up this call. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning. Can you bring down the volume of your radio, please? Okay. All right. So, what do you know where you're calling from? Yes. Uh, good morning, Rose and uh, guest. All right. Yeah, good morning. On, on, on the table. All right. Good you're morning. welcome. Thank you. Yes. Uh, is Brian, General Tyler is Brian Foundation. Yes. It's a very welcome idea. It's a very good thing. Okay. Because especially to the retired uh, military men. Hmm. Because if you look in the past, before the coming of Buhari into power, the military, retired people who have served this country were not paid, their money were not paid. They were suffering up and down hmm. until Buhari came to come and rescue some of them. I hope that kind of thing will not continue again because mm -hmm. it leads to uh, untimely death. Hmm. You understand? So, yeah. And the federal government should try to fund this in General Ibrahim Atari Foundation. To alleviate the suffering of and the, and the stress of hmm. those who have served this country. Okay. That is all I have to contribute this morning. All right. I'm sorry, I didn't get your name. Oh, Tijani Kakuri. All right, Kakuri. Tijani from Kakuri. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Mr. Tijani. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay, so kudos to the foundation that is actually bringing this up because it's actually relieving lots of yes, burdens, yes, I can yes, say. Yes. So kudos to General Ibrahim Atari Foundation. Yes. So, um, Doctor. Yes. Just quickly wrap all of yes. this off now, now, one of the things, let, let me bring the question of uh, Oiza. Oiza in. Yeah. Now, one of the things that they tend to experience that has uh, a serious ability to affect uh, people's way of uh, operation here is depression. Yeah. Now, uh, talking about depression, how can you manage the depression? Yeah. You know, once you notice that you or you see some signs and symptoms, like uh, let's say, so let's get it straight. Yes. Stress leads to depression. Yes. All yes. right. So we're talking about managing yes. depression. Okay. Yes. So so uh, that is a long term persistent uh, uh, exposure to stressful events mm. also leads to to depression as mm. well. So looking at looking at the signs and, yeah. and symptoms depending on the onset. You know, we always talk about sleep deprivation, mm -hmm. you know, the uh, had, uh, what do you call it, uh, loss of appetite, yeah. you know, loss of interest in a lot of uh, activities. That one would normally do. Exactly. You know, suicidal uh, idea, uh, uh, beliefs or ideation, you mm. know, all of us are part of one who start feeling as if the world should come to an end. Mm. But the best thing to do here is, to start to talk about to someone very close, someone you can confine in about the challenging task. Mm. Like the last time we talked about support network. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, just hold on, doctor. Yeah. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Yeah, my name is. Oh, I can hardly hear you. Your name is. Moses from television. Oh, All right, go ahead. Let's hear. You're welcome. Yeah, I want to ask a question. All right, go ahead. Uh, how can someone manage uh, combat stress? How can someone manage combat stress? Combat stress. Okay, that's what we're looking at. So we'll definitely go into that. All right, thank you very much for calling. So, um, Dr. Isa, this is exactly what we're talking about, <laughs> exactly. and I'm sure a lot of people want to know. Want to know, yeah. yes. Uh, now, uh, uh, look at, looking at the activities mm. that one has to one has to do to to be able to manage that is like we, last time I think we talked about support network. Yeah, you know, support network is is one of the pillars of mental health uh, well being. 
Mm -hmm. You understand? If if someone has a very strong support network, it's it's like the shock absorber to his own uh, well-being as mm -hmm. well. Does because if you have a very good mental health, you are going to be physically and uh, emotionally uh, stable. Yeah. So the support network here is the first step because you tend to talk to someone, mm -hmm. and uh, before so that you'll be able to have a soft landing. Then the next thing here is you can actually reach out to us as well uh, mm -hmm. on our own hotline. You you call. Then I will give out the numbers. Yes, yeah. yes. Then you call, then we'll be able to discuss with you on how to to manage depending on the onset and for the duration as well, mm -hmm. for how long it has it has been manifesting over, the, uh, over, over time. Now, another thing here is you... Aside from talking to a professional, yeah. you know, there are some activities like exercise. Mm. Now, th one of the things that we tend to ignore a lot is, is the me time. Mm. Yes, I say the me, M-E, the me time. That's my own quality time. Yeah. We, don't, we don't usually have the quality time. That is time for meditation, you mm -hmm. understand. Time for, for self-reflection you know, time for self-evaluation, mm -hmm. you know, and, and self-encouragement, you understand. If you have, like, if you, your ability to give yourself, even if it is just 30 minutes, to, to relax, you know, and, and reflect on one or two things, uh, you then realize that sometimes you'll be able to manage the stressful or, or the depression uh, uh, or the events yeah. that are at hand. Now, another thing here is, is sleep. Sleep mm -hmm. is very essential. You know, we ignore our, our siesta, and siesta is very good. Mm -hmm. You know, we the minimum hours of sleep we are to get at night is like nothing less than nine, uh, sorry, eight hours. eight hours. You understand? That is the minimum. You can't go below that. Mm -hmm. The brain needs to relax. Because the brain, just like I'm talking to you now, it is the brain that is assessing it's and processing room. all the information, mm. the color of your clothes, the color of the world, the color of this and that, everything simultaneously. So it needs to rest. Once the brain is rest, uh, you have that enough rest for the brain, mm. then you'll be able to have a way out to your own problem in most cases. You know, we are talking about how to manage it before uh, you, you meet a professional. Mm -hmm. Now, if, if it persists for, and it is also important to know that dieting too also help. Mm -hmm. Yes, dieting. Okay. You know, there are some, you know, we tend to eat a lot of things <laughs> and there are some, some, some diets that are not actually good for us. Mm -hmm. You know, there are some people who are naturally lactose intolerant, that mm -hmm. is uh, milk, uh, milk and things like that. They don't actually, yeah. exactly, they don't digest properly in their system. Mm -hmm. So it, it will also contribute to their own stressful events, you know, persistent uh, heart bones, you know, constipations and things like that. Mm -hmm. So people don't look at their own dieting as mm -hmm. an, a source of uh, therapy. For, for this is actually new to me too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you know, and and it, you know, water to the the level of water you take per day mm. also matters, and what you eat before you go to sleep. So how about people that actually say they take food to relieve? Is realized like stress, stressful eating. There's something yeah. like that. Yes, we we, we actually <laughs> call it binge eating. Binge eating. Yes, Thank the you. binge eating. Now, now this is like the other side of the coin. Mm. Some people when they are depressed, yeah, or anxious, mm. or they tend to, they have any emotional challenge, mm. they result to what binge eating. That is why some people. You see some people grow, grow, uh, growing fatter, mm. and if you are ah, evidence of good living, no, he's <laughs> depressed. More. Yes, he's depressed. Uh, he, that person is depressed. Mm. But the only thing he can control as of that moment mm. is the food he has in front of him. Mm. So the eating, it's like the person is burying himself in that, consoling himself with that food. Mm. You understand, regardless of what kind of a food is that. But one has to also understand that even. If you are going to have, or you are going to, because sometimes 
sometimes some people like the people that are coming out of uh, substance abuse they tend to have this uh, period of, of binge eating yeah. yes because the, their test buds are now becoming stimulated and mm. the senses are now uh, becoming coming back to normal mm. so they t want to eat this eat that eat that so that is understandable but it is very very much advisable for one to meet a professional first mm -hmm. you know so that you will know all about your own dieting what is good for you you try to experiment mm -hmm. in one or two ways okay. now that as Side. then uh, how is our surroundings mm. how sane and serene is our own surrounding it's very important because there are some places like some places we we, we stay like uh, sometimes our rooms mm. you remove your shirt you throw it there you remove uh, you understand, mm. and the thought of cleaning the room <laughs> itself is <laughs> impressive. <laughs> exactly, you understand. Yeah. So, so you see all of this. Thing. So, but but as you're coming in, you fold the shirt. You you just mm. keep it where it belongs, or you have a basket for dirty clothes and things like that. It tends to uh, I mean, reduce the burden. You understand mm. on the emotion, the negative aspect of your own emotion. Because seeing it, at least you have something mm. that you can control for the time being, you know, things like that. Then, then if you have a very nice environment, you're going to have a very good and sound sleep. Mm. Other infectious diseases won't be able to come in yeah. and compile a lot of problems oh. to you, you know. Uh, so, so that that aside now, something that is also very important here is that how informed are we? Hmm. You know, now the the last call I talked about how can you manage a combat, combat stress. stress yeah. You know, managing a combat stress is different from managing an o normal operational stress. Hmm. That is the normal stress we are talking, the yeah. layman stress. We are. In combat stress, there are certain activities that are quite ad advisable. Hmm. Like some of my clients that are in the military or hmm. in the security settings, the first thing I say, get a punching bag. Hmm. Yes, get yeah. a punching bag. Once you have that punching bag, give yourself at least 30 minutes through all of your anger, all of your frustration. Mm. Uh, like, like, let's say uh, your master warrant officer is stressing you, punch the bag. Mm. You know, the operation didn't actually go well or the fatigue in the operation or what have you, Whatever. punch the bag. Through all of your anger, your frustration, mm. you know, on the bag and you burn all the sweat, and as you're going into the shower, let the shower feel every drop of the shower and mm. it's going to be therapeutic and that relief is going to be there. You understand? So as you're coming out, yeah. you're coming out as a person who has reduced his negative stressors, mm. you know, and is ready to... Yes. And another thing here is, another thing is, is the activities mm. within the barracks. Mm -hmm. You know, that is for those that are in the barracks. There are some times that you can just choose to seek a permission and go for obstacle crossing. Mm. You know, in that way, it will also help in building your own uh, 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 technical skills. Yeah. Your level so of profession. Exactly. So, so you're, the better you become, the more you train, mm. the better you become, the better you become, the more accurate and uh, productive you tend to be on your own uh, operations. Mm. You, s you can see the, the cause and effect in, in, in terms of handling it. So, so these are informations that, that most of them don't actually get, mm -hmm. you understand, yeah. and which is very, very important. Then the quality time you spend in the barracks. Mm. If you look at the barracks, you notice that, or if you look at most of our own surroundings now, you have a lot of green areas. You take your family out, you know, it, it mustn't actually be you have to go and take ice cream, you know, shawarma or what have you, no. Uh, if you are married, your wife can just cook or make a small zobo and something, but just go outside, see, do something out of the uh, ordinary with mm. your own family. You sit down, you discuss, you laugh, you play games, you play football and things like that. I, I can tell you categorically about some that are that are single mm. well they, they they were able to get uh, video games and it helped them you mm. understand in releasing and reducing the the stress. The, the stress as well so so but when it persists for 
up to three weeks, mm. now it becomes a problem. So you have to seek a professional, professional advice. Help. You understand that yeah. is very, very important. You have to seek for a professional advice or a professional assistance. So in that way, because some of them, uh, like I said earlier, I keep on saying it, mm. some people go into substance abuse as a form of therapy for, for their own negative uh, uh, emotion, you understand, yeah. which is not actually advisable because that substance as well is also a problem on its own. Once a person becomes hooked up or mm. addicted to it, it's a problem on upon a pr another problem, you know, which is also very very important. So it's it's it advisable for for one to seek for professional advice mm -hmm. when he notices that his problem now is getting to like three weeks. Then you seek for a professional assistance. Okay, all right. So well, uh, um, this is where we draw the curtains for today. So in a nutshell, you need to get professional assistance. Uh, you need to actually, um, you know, um, get professional assistance and then you need to talk to somebody. You need to create your support network. You need to relieve your stress through punching bags, <laughs> you know, um, and so many other ways. Serene environment, what you eat, you know, how you relate to other people. Your me time is also important. So these are a few things that you can do. And let's not also forget that you can get in touch with General Tahir Ibrahim Foundation. Yes, you can get in touch with them to help you in any of this, uh, you know, things or any of this mental illnesses that you might be going through. All right, and like I promised earlier, I'll give you the numbers to get in touch with them. It's 091-279-50177. All right, 91 Two seven nine five zero one seven seven. That's a number to get in touch with the General Ibrahim Atahiro Foundation, or go through their website www.atahirofoundation.org. All right, on Instagram and Facebook is at Atahiro underscore Foundation. On Twitter is at GIA underscore Foundation. On YouTube is Atahiro Foundation one word. So let's not forget that the General Atahiro uh, Atahiro. Ibrahim Atari Foundation is promoting mental health and social well-being for military and paramilitary, all right, so and their dependents also. All right, so thank you so much, Dr. Ham Issa Hamza, who is a clinical psychologist. I got it right <laughs> <laughs> this time. Thank all right, you. so thank you very much. I uh, do appreciate you coming through. So hopefully we get to have you here next week, and we'll talk about another aspect of mental health coming from uh, this particular program called CASIS. That's the Campaign Against Suffering in Silence. My name is Rose Yusuf Kayser. Join us again next week, Tuesday, from 11 to 11.30 a.m. For me and Dr. Issa, we say Happy New Year once again. <laughs>